Jesus have showed up. They were able to be consoled because they were honest with their innermost feeling. Springs and Pastor Hurst, our announcements for today, July 21st, 2024, are as follows. Let's remember those that are on our prayer list. Never stop praying, especially for others. Always pray by the power of the Spirit. Stay alert and keep praying for God's people. This is according to Ephesians 6 and 18. The combined choir we will have Hurst on July 25th at 6 p.m. Then we'll be a choir, not our voices only, but our very lives, singing in harmony in a stunning anthem to the God and Father of our Master Jesus, according to Romans 15 and 6. Saturday mornings, meditation and prayer through conference call will be held at 8 o'clock a.m. It's a wonderful day to be grateful to God. Start the day with a prayer and end with smiles. The following ministries will be in recess until August 5th. Men and Women's Ministry, Sunday School, Women in Prayer, Noonday Prayer, and Bible Study. Those are our announcements for today. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, just a, a report. A friendly reminder, uh, the following ministry are recess until August the 5th. Men and women ministry, Sunday school, women in prayer, noonday prayer and Bible study. Remember, Saturday morning meditation and prayer come for call at 8 p.m. Let's continue to keep the sick and shed in prayer at the Lee Spring Mission at the Baptist Church and all over the world. Because we are today. We need all your prayer. Thank you. Thank you, Deacon Black. At this time, we're going to make a stand. Let us make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Let us come before the Lord with gladness. Be thankful unto him and praise his holy name. Let us receive our opening selection by our choir at this time. Test the one, two. Oh, 
90 verses 1 through 3. And it says, Lord, you have been my dwelling place in all generations before the mountains were brought forth. And over you and ever you had turned from the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting. You are our God. Psalms 90 verses 1 through 3. God, you are our God. Yes. Let us go in prayer. Oh, gracious and almighty God, it's once again that we come calling on your holy name. God, thank you for last night's sleep. God, acknowledge that, God, you are God, yes. and you are God alone. Well, for God, you are Lord of Lord and King of King well, Lord, and we thank you for all of that. Yes. God, we acknowledge that we have sinned and come short of your glory, but yes. God, we know that you are forgiven, God, yes. and you're going to forgive us. God, it is with thanksgiving that we're thankful for yet another day. Yes. Stand us up before you, Lord God, in the land of the living, Lord God, and able to say, God, we thank you for allowing us just to see another day. Yes. And God, it's with supplication, Lord God. We ask that you just be with us, God. Stand with us, Lord God. God, we ask that you just open up our ears, soften up our yes. hearts, close 
Let's close our mouths so that we can receive the word of God, Lord God. God, God, we ask that you, Lord, we rehearse down into the storehouse of knowledge that he can rise up to give us a word that will make men, women, boys, and girls come run and say, I yield, I yield. What must I do to be saved? And God, when we did everything that you have assigned our hands to do, when this world won't afford us a home anymore, God, we ask you for a home somewhere around your kingdom, God, where we can continue to praise your name forevermore. In Jesus' holy name, we do pray. Amen and amen and amen. to have it on our monitors, and when you see it, we're going to get started and say it by saying our affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From hence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost. I believe in the universal church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. You may have your seat. At this time, we would like to welcome all our persons or visitors that might be visiting with us on today. You don't have to stand. And we would also like to just say good morning and to those that are worshiping with us this morning online. We're glad you're here. And at this time, we're going to have a presentation by our new minister. Hey there. Is today hey there. Is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, Maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together, following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired Word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out his plan for us. So welcome to church. At this time, it's time for our offering. It's offering time. May we stand for our offertory responsibly and please. It's tithing and giving time. Praise the Lord. Lord, 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 Lord,
From whom does the tithe belong? Why should we tithe? Should we tithe our gross or our net? How much should we tithe? What is God's promise to us? Let us all give, and it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for those that are tied, and God, we thank you for those that may not have been able to tie, but have an offering, Lord God. We thank you, God, for those offerings, Lord God. May you increase it, that it might be for the betterment of our church. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. We're going to ask if you turn to the right as you come out and give your tithe. Selection by our choir. We're going to have a spoken word by Reverend Hurst. 
we know that Reverend Hurst is going to reach down into the storehouse of knowledge and come up with a word on high from God. So let's get prepared to receive that word in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us point towards Reverend Hurst and say, Reverend Hurst, preach the word. Reverend Hurst, preach the word. Reverend Hurst, we need a word. Yeah. Let us pray. Most holy and sovereign God, our Heavenly Father, yes, sir. we give your name honor and praise and glory from the rising of the sun to the going down the same. You and you alone, you are worthy to be praised. We thank you for another day's journey, for strength to dress ourselves, and a mind to get on our knees early this morning and to give praise and glory to you. I pray now, Lord, in Jesus' name that you would be with me this morning, that you would speak with my mouth as I share the unsearchable riches of glory. 
And then you take all the glory because it belongs to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I give the Lord thanks and praise and glory and honor for his goodness uh, toward us. The Lord has been good. Amen. He has been good. Thank our men for leading us in, in worship this morning, and I'm we're thankful that I was able to have some, some degree of um, rest for the past two weeks. I said some, some degree. Amen. You know, when we, we pastor, we're never on vacation because sickness and death and trials and trouble, they never take a break. Amen. They don't. They never take a break. So we, as pastors, still have to make ourselves available to you when you're going through. And it's a part of who we are. Amen. I want to thank our deacon ministry for um, visiting Deacon Singletary uh, the other week. All of us went to see him. And also for vi visiting um, Brother Larry McCain, who got saved and joined the church. Amen. 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 We thank you so very much. So glad to have with us Reverend Dr. Bowden, who is the new principal at Santa Grove Middle School. Amen. God bless you. And he did ask that we at the church family will be supporting, supporting him. Amen. We will. Certainly, uh, we certainly will um, want to do that. And I'm so good, so glad to see my cousin Michael here. God bless you, Michael Crawford. So glad to have you here this morning with us. And thank you, Reverend Mac, for leading us in um, for leading us in worship. Amen. Amen. Our text this morning is taken from the Book of Numbers. I thank Reverend Rowe uh, for sharing in my absence last week. And, Amen. And, uh, and my daughter Rosalind the other week before that. In Numbers chapter 13, and I want to read some verses from 14. And forgive me for reading such a long, a long passage of scripture, but I want you to get the gist of the text because I know all of you all read the Bible every day. Some of you all got real quiet. Because I know all of you read the Bible every day. Amen. Amen. Somebody say he doesn't go on the mail and <laughs> Numbers chapter 13, verses 1 to 3. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Send down men that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel. Of every tribe of their fathers shall you send a man, every one a ruler among them. And Moses, by the commandment of the Lord, sent from the wilderness of Paran. All those men were heirs of the children of Israel. And then if you go over to verse 18. Let's go to verse 17. So verse, and Moses sent this, them to spy the land of Canaan and said unto them, Get you up this way southward. And go up at the mountain and see the land, what it is, and the people that do all the rain. Whether they be strong or weak, few or many. And what the land is that they dwell in. Whether it be good or bad. And what cities that they be, that they dwell in, whether in tents or in stronghold. And what the land is, whether it's fat or lean whether there be wood therein or not. And you be of good courage and bring of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the time of the first ripe grapes. And then look at verse um, 31. But the people that went up with him said, we're not able to go up against the people for they are stronger, stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, 
saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is the land eaten of the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the giants, the son of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. So we were in sight. Chapter 14, a few more verses, verse 16. And Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass to search it is an exceeding good land. If the Lord delight in us, then we will bring us into the land and give it to us, a land flowing with milk and honey. Only rebel ye not against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land. For they are bred for us, their defense is parted from them. And the Lord is with us, and fear them not. With your prayers and serving with the aid of the Holy Spirit, I want to talk about whose report do you believe? All right. All right. Whose report do you believe? In our biblical text this morning, the covenant community is on the edge of the promised land. A 90 miles journey two-week journey by foot, but it took them 40 years. Again, a 90 miles trip. A trip two weeks by on foot, but it took them 40 years. God instructs Moses to send out the 12 spies, one man from each of their own ancestral tribe. Moses gives specific details questions to be answered by those who will go spout the land. Go check out the land. I need to know the topography and the demographics. Go check out the land. Is it good or bad? Is it lean or fat? Is there any good timber on the land? And check out the people. See if they are strong or weak. See if they dwell in tents or in fortified cities. Go check out the land. When you come back, bring me some fruit of the land. Bring me some figs and pomegranates and grapes. That's your assignment. Saints of God, according to the text, the spies return after 40 days of investigating the land. They show up the fruit of the land, the luscious grapes, the sweet figs, and the fresh pomegranates. But there was two conflicting reports. The majority report was given by 10 spies. Listen to their report. Moses, we went into the land where you sent us. The land is flowing with milk and honey. It's plentiful in fruit. The people who dwell there are powerful, and their cities are, more, are fortified. The Amalekites, they dwell in the land of the south. The Hittite, the Jebusites, and the Amorites live in the mountains. And the Canaanites, they dwell by the sea and by the coast of the Jordan River. Right. Moses, you have lost your mind if you think we can attack those folk. We're not able to go up against the people for they are strong. And then we saw the giants of the people of Anak, and they made us look like grasshoppers. They brought back a negative report. It affected morale and negativity in the camp. In fact, in number 14, 1, it says that the entire congregation lifted up their voice, cried and wept all night upon receiving the majority report. They murmured against the leadership, Moses and Aaron, and considered stoning Joshua and Caleb. Now, saints of God, listen to the minority report coming from Joshua and Caleb. Moses, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. The land which we pass through is an exceeding good land. 
If the Lord delight in us, he will bring us into this land and give this land with us. Only rebel not against the Lord, neither fear the people of the land. For they are bread for us. Their defense is departed for them. And I love this. And the Lord is with us. Fear them not. The people became so mad with Joshua and Caleb. They considered stoning them. We have two reports. The ten spies represented the majority report. And Joshua and Caleb represented the minority report. The congregation believed the majority report. They presupposed that the majority was right. Saints of God, there are two reports as it relates to our upcoming election in November. There is the majority report. The Trump report which says he's ahead in electoral college votes. But we must be intelligent, astute. Have you read the tenets of Project 2025? Dr. Meade sent out a group text which said, a man who won't read is no better than a man who can't read. Project 2025 is a collection of policy proposals aimed at reshaping the U.S. federal government in the event of Trump victory. Project 2025 is led by the Harris Foundation, a right-wing thinking tank. It asserts that the executive branch of government will be solely under the direct control of the president which means there will be no checks and balance. It proposes reclassifying tens of thousands of federal civil service workers as political appointees in order to replace them with lawyers who will make it easy to endorse Trump policy. It seems to undermine the, rule, the role and rule of law as we now know it. It would terminate diversity, equity, and inclusion. Affirmative action will be off the table forever. Project 2025 will cut out military veteran benefits. Its goal is to regain total control of the government. One report of it, one report, one, one part of it made me laugh in derision. The project seeks to infuse government and society with Christian values. I said to myself, how can you do that when Trump can't even spare Christian? How can you have Christian values? And your leader is not a Christian. Last served and when he was shot, if he was shot. On the floor of the platform, asking about his shoes. Stood up yelling, fight, fight. If he was a Christian, he would have gotten up and thanking God for saving his life. And thank God for the hedge of protection around him. Those around him had insisted that he has changed. The other night, for one hour and 33 minutes, spewing out hatred, still lying, still holding the claim that the two, two 2020 election was stolen. I tell you, saints of God, we better be smart. I tell you, I stand with the minority report that wants to address climate change, wants America to be safer, and want the rich to pay their share of taxes and to bring back a good economy. 
Saints of God, the congregation of Israel, believed the majority report that was grounded in fear. When the ten spies gave their report, their teeth were rattling, knees shaking and knocking, voice trembling when they said the people in the land is stronger and more powerful. We're not able to fight against these people. They are stronger than we are. And they make us look like grasshopper. Saints of God, it's dangerous to believe a report made out of fear. A report made out of fear is not true and objective. Fear can be deadly and destructive. What are you talking about, Pastor? The ten spies who made the report and incited negativity and rebellion against God, God struck them dead. They were struck dead in the camp. Fear can be deadly and destructive. Be careful about making decisions by fear. To support the majority report, there was over 1,200,000 people, we believe, at this time. All those 20 and over, they died. Which meant there had to be, there was 14,500 days, 38 and a half years, which meant there had to be 85 deaths per day triggering 12 hours per day maximum for funerals, which gives seven funerals per hour for 38 and a half years. Fear can be destructive and deadly. Some of us, we don't have to believe if Trump don't win, if Trump don't win, there'll be a bloodbath in America. The Bible says God is our refuge. A present help in the time of trouble. We ain't got to worry about fear because we belong to the Lord. Some years ago, I was watching the Fear Factor, which I enjoyed watching. On one particular episode, the founder of fear of feet was to jump from a hundred storage building onto another. The winner would receive 50,000 in cold cash. All the contestants were overtaken by fear and vowed out, save one brother who looked like us. After he completed the feat, he was interviewed. The interviewer said to him, how did you make that leap? The brother said, I'm quite fearful of heights. I have a phobia of heights. The interviewer said, but you made the leap. The brother said, yes, I noticed while preparing for the leap, I had a harness around me and a man above me holding me. I said to myself, since I have a harness around me and the man above me holding me, I might as well overcome my fear. That's good news this morning. Don't fear this morning. There's a God above you holding you. Don't fret this morning. There's a God above you holding you. Don't turn around this morning. There's a God above you holding you. Don't get bitter. Don't throw in the towel. There's a God above you holding you. I love the way our old slave person said, up above my head, I hear music in the air. There must be a God somewhere. God is holding you. God is holding you. Don't let dark days steal your joy because God is, is holding you. 
Whose report do you believe this morning? I really like what Joshua and Caleb did. They based their report on three facts. First of all, there was the historical fact. God had delivered them out of 435 years of bondage in Egypt. That was a historical fact. Joshua and Caleb had imperial facts. The cluster of grapes, the figs and pomegranates from the promised land. Evident that the land was a seemingly blessed land. But thirdly, it was cumulates and all. They had the theological fact that God is faithful. The faithfulness of God. The latter clause of verse 9 sums it all up. And the Lord is with us. They knew that the Lord was a winner. Joshua and Caleb said, let us go up. Head at once and possess the land. They knew that God was faithful. They knew it had already been done. They knew it was a done deal. God always acts before, so when we get to where we need to be, the work is already done. You know what I'm talking about. When God told Noah to build an ark on dry land, Noah couldn't see it, but the flood was there already. When the people of God complained about the water at Mount Moriah being bitter, the tree to make it sweet, it was already there. When Moses stood on the bank of the Red Sea, the power to part the Red Sea was already in Moses' hand. When the Hebrew boys were thrown in the midst of the burning fire furnace, the fourth person, and we called him the Son of God, he was already there. When Elijah told the widow of Zarephath to open her empty cup, the bill and oil was there already. We were sinners. Why we were sinners? Christ died for us. The way of salvation was already made for us. I'm glad this morning that we serve a God. He's already there. If the doctors don't know how you walk away from the hospital because the chief physician was already there. If you don't know how you got the job that you got because the Lord was already there. I'm glad this morning that the God we serve, he's already there to work out our situations. He's already, he's already there. He's already, he's already there. He's already there. He's already there. I was at breakfast the other morning and I never, I never try to make it a point to get involved in conversations that don't, that I'm not involved in. And uh, so Walter Mack often said, if you, if you argue with a fool, when somebody comes in and don't know who the fool is, but something got the best of me Friday. <laughs> It really did. I was in there, and there was a person, and he was he was a Native American, and he was telling someone that I have breakfast with, I know who you're going to vote for, because this person uh, put money in your pocket or something like that. And, uh, you know, he said that. Now, he won't talk to me. Was, he was not talking to me, so I, I probably, but I just, I got involved in it, amen. I just couldn't, I just couldn't take it. My friend, it's like he was taking too long, and, you know, 
I got I got deal I got deal with this, and uh, you know. So I I said a few things, and uh, I think most of it was Christ-like. Amen. <laughs> I do, and I think the tone was I think the tone was was Christ was Christ-like. You know, I just said a few a few a few things, and things like you know you're gonna vote for someone who got 34 felony charges. You know, you're gonna you're gonna vote for someone like that. And you're gonna you're gonna vote for someone who doesn't doesn't care about you and doesn't doesn't care about minorities whatsoever. And the things that he said about people in Haiti in Africa says some very low things about us. And then some of us, you you're sitting here now and you're saying, why is he talking about politics? That's your problem. Because you ain't gonna vote. That, that, that is a problem. We, we have a right. Somebody, people die for these rights, you know. Now you, you might can't remember, but I can remember as a little boy going to the movie theater downtown Rayford, and we said, we, 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 we had to sit, uh, we, we had to sit in one spot, sit down low, and they sit up high. And they pour drinks and popcorn and do stuff on you. And I remember, you know, signs that said uh, white and, and colored, you know, you know, right. And so what we as Christians believe, we believe in everybody. We, we don't see color as an objective. We see everybody as being a child of God. That's what we're supposed to, you know. You, we do, you know. And, then, and, then, and in the 2025, in that uh, proposed policy proposal, it's saying that it's, it forbids that anybody sue for anti-white racism, which means that uh, people can say of the persuasion, they can say anything racial they want to, and there can't nothing be, can be said. You all know that ain't right. That's, that's, not, that's not right, you know. And some of us, we become so bougie ourselves you know, you stay in gated communities and you drive these nice cars and, and you forgetting about the rest of us. You know, you so you so bougie. Uh, you forgot where you came from. You, as if you lift your own self up by your own bootstraps. You know, you 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 know how it was back in the day. And we have to be remembered as people where we come from. Amen, we do. We come from a long way. And God is the one who brought us, and we didn't bring ourselves. And some of you, you so bougie, you you so bougie, you got to make an appointment to come to your house. Man. So, it shouldn't be like that. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be like that. If, they don't, if a person don't drive a certain kind of car, or wear a certain kind of clothes, or, or they subs and verbs don't agree, you can't hang out with them. Well, who, who, who are you? Amen. It's a shame that we, that we like that. Amen. Let us stand. Let us stand. Amen. And some of you have the audacity I've spoken with and, and say, you folk. You folk, I hate you, you folk, as if they're not, they're not been kissed by nature's son. You, you folk, amen. If you're here this morning and you're not saved, you need to be saved. The Bible says if you confess the Lord Jesus Christ with your mouth and believe your heart that God will raise him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. With the heart man believe in righteousness, with the mouth confession men of salvation, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. Save, yes, a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ that guarantees everlasting life. Would there be one this morning who will come and give your life to Christ? Would there be one who will come? Maybe you're here and you want to come on your Christian experience to be a part of this church on Christian experience or you can come by a letter. Would there be one who would come?
Those who would like prayer, we ask that when you come to the altar, if you would, if we would spread out and be safe. If you stand in need of prayer, we ask that Reverend Dr. Bowden would come and lead us in a word of prayer. willing to surrender it all to the Lord today. No matter what it is that you're going through, no matter what your situation might be, there's absolutely nothing too hard for God. And so if we're willing to just give it all to him, God can fix it. God can take a crooked place and make it straight. And I know God is still a healer. And so as we come, let us release our faith in our situations. And I believe that God not only can, but that he will hear our prayer. Let us pray. Precious God, Heavenly Father, we come in the righteous and mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our leader and forgiver. Lord, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for giving us a mind to come before the altar because your Son allows us to come in his name before you, Father. And he says that when we're in his will, when he lives in us, we can come and ask whatever it is, and you'll grant it for us. So, Lord, we come in faith right now, releasing our situations to you, Lord, because if we could have fixed them, we would have done it already. But we know, Lord, that we can't fix a lot of things. So relationships, they need you, Lord. Finances, Lord, sometimes they need you, Lord. If we get sickness in our body, and the doctors can't make us well, and we need you, Lord. Lord, whatever it is, Lord, right now, we give it to you in the mighty name of your son, Jesus. Believing, Lord, that you will step in. and You'll make a way out of no way. You'll make a difference when there seems there's no way out. You're able to do what we can't do. And so, Lord, we thank you for that, Lord. And we release our faith in our situations, Lord. Lord, I pray right now for Lee Springs Missionary Baptist Church. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you will continue to bless this holy place, Lord. I pray that you will continue to use this place to save some souls, to elevate some saints, to be a bright light for those that are lost, so they can find their way, because it's only through the light of Christ that those in darkness can come into the marvelous light. Lord, I pray for the pastor of this great church, Pray for my pastor and my friend. I pray, Lord, that you will continue to keep him encouraged. I pray, Lord, that you will help him to stay strong. Lord, I pray that you will touch his body and, and allow him to, to be healthy always, Lord. Lord, I pray that as he preaches and proclaims the word, Lord, that the word he gives will be a mighty word, proclaiming your truth to your people. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you will just be in the blessing business now. We're in a time of great turmoil, a time of great confusion. But I know, Lord, no matter what the end seems to be, you still are in control. And so, Lord, we rest our faith in you, Lord. It doesn't matter who's the president, you're still in charge. It doesn't matter what the doctor says, you're still in charge. And that boss might say no, but if you say yes, you're still in charge. And so, Lord, we come and we just believe and release it all to you right now. And it is in the mighty name of your son, Jesus Christ, that we believe and we pray. And the redeemed of the Lord say amen. 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 Thank you. Reverend Dr. Bowden, thank you so very much. Amen. Amen. I do pray that you continue to pray for those sick among us. Uh, Sister McEady, uh, Deacon Robert Singletary, 
uh, Brother Larry McCain, yeah. Pearl Stevenson, Mother Pearl Stevenson, and others. Amen. Amen. I ask that you do uh, pray for me. I wrestle so hard. Um, next Sunday, I'm going to talk about an answer for evil. Amen. 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 Psalm 37. Fret not thyself because of evil doers, and neither be envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down. Like the, they should, like the grass and wither like the green herb. Amen. So pray for us. Amen. You've been, you've been plagued by evil. Amen. I want to help tell you what to do with it. So pray for us. An answer for, an answer for evil. So do, do, do pray for us. Amen. And God bless you and, and be encouraged. Again, I'm so thankful. I see one of my, my favorite couples back there, uh, Brother Blue and Sister Magoo, and God bless you all. Amen. 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 And those, those, are my, those are my friends. God bless Amen. you all. And Deacon, uh, Deacon Hollingsworth. Amen. God bless you. So glad to, so glad to, so glad to see you. Amen. Amen. God bless Amen. you. And you would come in after we, after we done had all the call. God bless you. <laughs> God bless you. I love him. That's my buddy. God bless you. May we all stand. Now, Lord, we are thankful. The majority is not always right because you are sovereign and you are totally in control. I believe the report of Joshua and Caleb because they said the Lord is with us. We are turn down their defense. They bread for us. I believe in the Lord's report. Bless us and be with us in, in coming days. And I pray for there's despair that you give hope and peace and bless now our people. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit Rest now in the Bible to people henceforth, now and forevermore. And the people of God said together, Amen, 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 amen. and Amen.